today we're going to talk about what it what does it look like to resist the enemy what does it look like to reject the lies many times when we are being tested the enemy comes with sorcery the enemy comes with false realities the enemy comes with these attacks upon your body upon your mind that you would give in to the fear that you would give in to this false truth one of the beginning stages of warfare that the lord taught me was speaking the word over my life over my circumstances over my situations this is the foundation of warfare of intercession is speaking the truth because when you speak the truth you come into agreement with the truth and even in the beginning stages let's say you don't you, you don't necessarily believe there comes there comes a, a point of transition where that act of faith for you to take the steps of faith in speaking what you know is the truth which is the word of god over your the written word of god over your life including the the, the living word which is the rhema word of god the right now word of god so you have the written word and then you have the spirit of God within you who gives you living word. Jesus himself speaks to each of us today, gives us living daily directions, gives us prophetic promises, personal prophetic promises for our life. So we have the written testimony, the written gospels, the written inspired word of God. And then we have the spirit of God living within us leading us and giving us prophetic promises that the Lord, the Father, has spoken over us. So in the beginning stages, this is the basics of warfare. Learn to speak the word of God over your life. If the Lord has, give, has given you specific promises, speak those promises over your life. See, the enemy likes to come in these places, in these in these um, seasons of testing that the Lord allows for our good, he comes with lies. He comes with lies to the mind. And these, I have experienced the attacks of the enemy will manifest in the flesh. But we have the position to either take authority in Christ and reject each one of those lies. For example, the enemy has come with attacks to the body. This can come in many different forms. I'm going to speak on one form right now. The enemy has come a couple months back with what seemed to be a lump in one of my breasts. Immediately, this was the place where the Lord had gotten me to. It took me time to get here. The Lord has increased my faith by the mighty hand that he has done in my, the mighty things that he has done in my life to get me to a place where now I recognize that the enemy could come with sorcery. The enemy does come with pains and with things in the body because he wants you to, to walk in fear. When you begin to walk in fear, you, you attach yourself, you shackle yourself. Fear is a shackle. It is, it is a stronghold. So let's say that you have been delivered from the spirit of fear. Let's say that you have been delivered from a specific sickness. Let's say that you have been delivered from oppression in different areas, whether that's suicidal thoughts, whether that is um, anything. You have been delivered. In these seasons of testing, I can guarantee you the enemy will come back with the same attack. The only difference is that the enemy is no longer within you. Those spirits that were oppressing you and had shackles on you were within you until you were delivered by the power of God. So now the enemy will come 
and attack you from the outside with those same voices that once attacked you to make you believe that you are still bound. Because if it can get you to receive this fear, oh, you know what, maybe I wasn't delivered. Maybe I need more deliverance. Maybe I, maybe it just, maybe it didn't work. Maybe God is not real. These are all lies of the enemy, which is why it's in so, so important to get into the habit of speaking the truth over yourself, over your mind. And then this just prevails over the lives of those around you. You begin to intercede on behalf of all of those around you. But I'm telling you, look at, look at even now. Even now, the enemy in this new season of, 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 of testing, 100%, I look back and I'm like, okay, I have grown drastically. My faith and my trust in God has grown drastically. I'm not where I used to be. But you see, the enemy comes and he still wants me to grab, to tap into this fear. So anyways, I, I had this, a couple months back, I started to feel this lump in my, in my breast. And I remember during this time, immediately, I heard the voice of God. There's, I'm on the second story, just so you, this is the, this is the presence of God for you. There's a hummingbird. Hallelujah. This is where the Lord wants to go with this. This is why we are led by the Spirit. There was a season of my life, a, a time, Jesus himself manifested himself in me. I, I saw in the spiritual realm the first time ever Jesus was behind me, tapping me on the shoulder with this excitement that I had never experienced um, God having before. I had never saw Jesus in the spiritual realm like that. I had never seen God have this much joy over us. And it wasn't until I saw that vision in the spiritual realm where Jesus was behind me with this excitement that I have never even seen in this, in this world, this excitement that it blew my mind to think that this was God. And this is how excited he was over us. At that moment, I was beginning to write a prophetic um, word that the Lord was giving to, giving to me to a special sister of mine on here. At the time, we didn't really know each other. This, this was someone who I had encountered maybe once or twice. And the Lord's excitement to give her this word, it, it blew my mind that there was this much joy in our God. Because for so many years, I had seen God and revered God in, as, as God. I did, had not known God as the father. I had not known God as my friend, let alone anything else that the scriptures testify. Your husband, your provider, your protector. You, we believe these things, but from a distance. Because we have this image that it is like this somber God. That is what I have perceived through being in religion. Not receiving the correct revelation of the grace, the transition in periods of grace, of forgiveness, of mercy. I had not experienced the Lord in that way. So this blew everything out of the water. When these interactions began to happen, that is when I began to seek out the truth in this area. And God manifested himself. God the Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, different occasions different persons in this season where the lord was showing me how with me he was how present he was there was a a span of time where i would wake up in the morning and i would open my blinds i would go downstairs and i would drink my coffee mind you for many years i had thought it was a program set up a very very much like rituals i need to pray i need to fast i need to um I need to study, I need to pray, I need to fast, I need to study, I need to pray. It was like this, it was, it be, had become, it was in a sense becoming very ritualistic, not relationship. So there was this time pretty recently where the Lord was showing me how present he was in my life after that um, 
um, that vision of in the spiritual it was a it was a glimpse into the spiritual realm that's what um, Jesus had explained to me and so for for a couple mornings consistently consecutively for I would say about a week to two weeks I would open up my blinds every morning I would go downstairs to grab my coffee and I would come back upstairs and what my prayer time which I usually would it would consist of just praying in the spirit I would grab my coffee and I would begin to talk to the Lord and in the midst of that talking I would pray in the spirit because my spirit would be edified I would begin to have revelation of of what he's speaking to me so consistently when I would come back upstairs with my coffee I would begin to talk with the Lord I would begin to pray in the spirit and I'm with him as my witness the hosts of heaven as my witness consistently for at least two weeks the sun would shine brighter in my room every morning this happened the lord does these types of things to show us how with us he is to show us that this is beyond coincidence Every morning now, we've gotten to the place where, see, see, the Lord will nurture us, and then he wants us to know. He wants us to walk in faith. So now, I don't see the sun brighten every single morning, but now I know that when I grab my coffee and I'm sitting talking with the Lord, whether I acknowledge the presence of God or not, he is with me. He is with you. Another instance of this, same season of my life the lord was coming down on the fact that he is with his children because if he can get me to believe this how present he is in my life whether i had seen him or not because even when i didn't see him he was there if i can believe this i can tell his children the truth my encounters will give you faith and hope for you to know how present he is so in the same season, I would come downstairs and as I'm making my coffee, hummingbirds would come to the hummingbird feeder. Mind you, I've been living in this house and I had on a, a rare occasion, I would see a hummingbird, but my eyes weren't focused on the presence of God. My, 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 my mind, I wasn't thinking, I wasn't living in the way of knowing that God is present. God is really with us. God is really near to us. God is within us. It is, see, that's why it is when we come into the revelation of the truth that we don't perish in these ways. We don't lack knowledge in these ways. We can walk through the things of this life with contentment because we know our God is with us. But he needs to build us up and build our faith and our trust up so that we could know that he's with us, whether we feel him or not, whether we see him or not in these areas. But I'm telling you, there was a season of my life where these hummingbirds every morning in this same time that he was showing me the sun shining through my window. In the same season, he's showing me every time I would go down to my coffee, I would be sitting there talking to him and a hummingbird would show up. So with these hummingbirds, they would show up every day, multiple times a day when I'm at this window. It's like the Lord removed all coincidence. The Lord was like, he was so, he was so persistent. See, the Lord flexes. He likes to show off to those who believe. His, he's, he, there's a pure holiness, masculinity. There is a feminine and masculine nurturing. This is why God, the full aspect of God is male and female. God is not bound by neither male nor female. God is, I am. He is wholeness. He is fullness. He is everything, all in all. This is, this is, so the Lord nurtures, the feminine aspect of God nurtures and the masculine aspect of God, the male aspect of God is the, the, the like the, the provider, the fighter, the, the protector. So the Lord likes to flex and it, he's so persistent that we would know the truth. When we are thirsting and we are seeking for truth, it is a pleasing aroma to the Lord. It's, it is a step of faith to want to know the truth. So he, every time, multiple times a day, 
it was literally it was so exaggerated that it was like undeniable if i was to de if i was to deny or doubt the presence of god in my life it would be for me to be for be to, for me to be in disobedience like rejection that's how obvious and 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 persistent he was for me to know that he was with me because so many will be set free by the truth because we are not taught these things we talk about these things we read the scriptures but we do not believe these things which is why fear has us fear binds us because when we truly know the love of god for us that perfect love casts out every fear and that is what he's been doing in this season of my life removing fear after fear shackle after shackle one more testimony i would come up to my room and different hours of the day i would be praying in the spirit and i would see the wind we have high winds here but it would literally go from a very still i live in the desert a very still and as i would begin to pray i would literally hear the whistling of the wind on multiple occasions and what the lord revealed to me in this time was literally the fire the things that are happening in the spiritual realm are like a mighty wind he needed me to know that this is what's happening when a child rises in faith in prayer in intercession whether it be for their life or for those around them or for those that the lord has brought into their life when you open your mouth in faith specifically praying the spirit but nonetheless faith in prayer pers persistent prayer prayer that perseveres there are mighty things happening in the spiritual realm and the lord for this season allowed me to see by the whistling of the winds this this for the, for the wind to whistle it was a mighty wind it wasn't just a trees were blowing wind was blowing through the trees he's he he was exaggerating this for me to know the power that was being released through the prayer. And now there comes a time where now I don't see these things. I may, I might see his presence in that same way here and there. But what the Lord has showed me is that you, you don't need me to nurture you now because you believe me. You believe now that when you open up your mouth, you believe that the fire is being released. That, that my light is being released through you. Now you know whether you see a hummingbird or not. See, I haven't seen this for a while. And here at the second story, which I have never seen, I saw a hummingbird as I was speaking this message to you guys. This is the love of our God. He wants to release us, free us from every fear because the enemy comes with the attacks of fear. If he can get you to fear a sickness, you receive the sickness. You receive, if you begin to fear, the doctor comes to you and tells you that you have been diagnosed with cancer and you receive this, you will fear. You will believe this word curse that has been spoken over you, that the enemy has, you, has brought forth for you to agree with. And now by you agreeing with this in fear, you bind it to you. Excuse me. The enemy will come with lies. And if they are instilling fear, reject those lies. So I'm going to tell you what happened with the lump in my breast. This was a couple months back. And ever since it happened, I remember I immediately went to the Lord and I said, Lord, what is this? Because I began to feel a pain and I felt a small lump. And I asked the Lord directly and immediately, what is this? The Lord said, do not fear. I heard clear as day, the Lord said, do not fear. From that moment forward, that is what I continued. Every time a moment came up where I would touch it, I even had to stop touching it. I, for the moment that I would touch it and I would feel the pain, I would immediately say, my God said, do not fear. There is no sickness in my God. 
I am healed. There is no, these are the things that I would say over myself. There is no sickness in God and God is in me. The spirit of God is within me. There is no sickness in me. It is impossible. These are the things that I would tell myself. My God said, do not fear. My father who sits on the throne told me, do not fear. I will not fear. This is, these are the things that we're telling ourselves. David would talk to him, he said, oh my soul, why are you weary? In the Psalms. This is, this. remember, the mind is enmity with God. So the enemy can use his sorcery. Many times, this has happened even in my car, situations where something has not worked. Mind you, this is a 2018 uh, truck. And I remember I was going to make a trip here to Vegas before the whole move, the, before the whole will of God happened. I had my truck loaded, like in two stories of suitcases and stuff. I had literally brought my whole life over here. And my truck didn't want to start, turn on. A pretty much newer truck didn't want to turn on. And I remember that moment initially, I'm like, oh man, maybe I'm not supposed to go. That moment, that initial moment was a moment of fear. Maybe this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Maybe I'm not supposed to go. Mind you, that moment, by the grace of God, I took a step back and I was reminded of a confirmation, a, a repeated confirmation that the Lord had given me in reference to a specific prophetic word that he wanted me to speak over my aunt. The Lord reminded me of how many times he had confirmed that word to me and that that word needed to be um, uh, prophesied over her on this trip. With that, I knew at that moment God wanted me to go. I rejected the fear. I rebuked the enemy. I took the key out of the ignition. I don't remember if this day I, I um, took the battery off and restarted the battery on the, tr on the truck. Nonetheless, the car turned on like brand new. These are the sorcery. These are the things many times when the enemy attacks, it is, it's, it's sorcery. It will manifest as though it's real, but it's a false reality. These are things that we don't know of. These are things that the Lord has taught me along the way in my own experiences. I have seen where he has used this crap. He has attempted that with the cars, with, with our bodies. He has attempted that with these lies. So this has been this has been one of the most recent ones, the lump in the breast. So this is why I'm going to talk about this one right now, because the enemy comes with these attacks of sickness, which gets us all, a lot of us to fear. Now, I stopped even touching my breast because I noticed that when I would touch the breast, I'm almost, I'm literally in the same manner agreeing that there's a lump there, knowing that the enemy, is, he, he works, he perverts the power of God and he can manifest things with, with magic, with this, with this, the power of God that he perverts. He can manifest things that are not real. They're only real when we tie into, when we agree with things, these things. Curses are real. These, these word curses that you agree with, they're real. So I stopped touching it. Every time I thought about the lump in my breast, I immediately would say, my God says not to fear. My dad in heaven said not to fear. And I would begin to just say these things. Although I'm still in the process with this, because the enemy, the Lord has allowed the enemy to show me this is going to be a mighty victory in my life because I have not agreed with this. And one thing that, that the enemy showed me and he, he uh, excuse me, that the Lord showed me and it was super powerful was that even somebody near you, your family sometimes might worry and their fear can cause you to fear. So I had my mom who I had mentioned this to in in actually in a way of testifying of the glory of God but my mom being my mom what mother's not going to fear so my mom wanted me to go to a doctor's visit and everything inside of me said absolutely not i had to hear what my heed what my dad what my dad said my dad said i must not fear if my dad told me not to fear there is absolutely no reason for me to go get checked there is no sickness in god I know this. 
I believe this. I know that this is an attack of the enemy and his lies will not win. I will resist his lies and in due time, I will reap the victory. And the glory will go to the Lord. The glory is going to the Lord right now because many of you are in fear right now. And we're going to detach you from all of that right now. Any one of you right now, pause the video. Anywhere in your life that you have received fear, you have accepted this fear, you have accepted the lies of the enemy. We detach you from those word curses right now. We detach you from those fears right now. Any false reality that the enemy has come with, any lies of sickness, any lies that you're still in depression and anxiety and worry, any of these lies in any area of your life that the enemy has come in, we detach you from it now. We, I release the fire of the Holy Spirit upon you that you would encounter the peace right now, the love of God right now, and the truth that you are free. Amen. And begin to declare the truth. If you don't know the truth in scriptures, this is a good time for you to begin the scriptures. If you don't know the promises of God over your life, this, this is where the scriptures come into play. That you would know who God is, that you would know who you are. The Holy Spirit will work and you begin to grow where these words, the, the written word, is, it's inscribed in our minds and in our hearts where it will just flow through the spirit of God within us, where we will be living testimonies of the living word of God coming out into play. The living word, Jesus himself through the Holy Spirit is speaking alive, prophetically, living rhema word right now through me. So this is why We want to come into the truth of the depths of God's love because the, the fact of the matter is it is his perfect love that will cast out every fear. It is the knowledge and understanding that God loves you perfectly and desires and wills for you more than you desire or will for yourself to be freed from everything that binds you in this life that you would live the fullness of the purpose and the and the destiny that the lord has declared for your life that you would reap every blessing with your name on it without delay that you would be the pushback from the enemy on these videos as of recently these last couple videos is just it makes me laugh because I have seen the testimonies, the messages that you guys are sending and the mighty move that God is doing in your life. Even things that the Lord has been revealing to me that many don't testify about, but they are encountering him. The enemy, when, when, when a child is in communion with the Lord, The power that is released through a child is not of their own. It is not of this world. Resist the lies. I'm still actively in this season of resisting this false reality that the Lord, that the enemy has brought forth. But I have experiences of the, my, the faithfulness of my God in the past. I no longer have get, gotten sick from colds, corona, all of these things. All of these things are testimonies to, to, to the faith that has increased, to the mighty works that God has done in my life. My grandma has been sick with COVID twice. Once we were sure of the second one, I didn't even pay no attention. She was sick with, with a virus and we don't know what it was. We didn't care to find out. I was in there without fear. See, God says we have to align these things. It's one thing to have the faith. Many of you have the faith. You have mighty faith. But there is still some fear, some doubt. For example, someone is sick around you and you're worried that you might possibly get sick. Oh man, I don't want to get near that person. Even that's even though that's not a crippling fear, that is a sense of fear, a doubt, a sense of doubt. There is some doubt there. 
So what the Lord showed me, it's the faith combined with no fear. Continue to testify these things. There shall be no sickness and no disease that shall come near us. Nothing shall harm us. How are we called to go and heal the sick if we're worried about the sicknesses? He wants our faith to be increased. That we would not be moved by the things around us. Resist the enemy by rejecting the lies. I don't care how long this test goes. I know that I will be victorious and I will not agree with anything that the Lord is putting in, uh, with, that, with anything that the enemy is putting into my body. These, these, this sorcery crap that he thinks he's working. It, it's, it is, it is for a time and a purpose and it is only for my good because I will come out of this like you victorious. We will not receive anything that is not the truth. The Lord has paid for our healing and it was not in vain. The Lord has paid by his blood for our sin and it was not in vain. We have been forgiven. We have been healed. It is only that his people perish because we lack knowledge. We are now coming into the understanding. We are now coming into truth. The truth of the depths of God's love and his perfect love is casting out every single fear. Resist the enemy by rejecting these lies. I don't care how real they seem to you and I don't care how long you got to you got to stay in this. It is only for your good. Don't receive it. Even if you receive it, the Lord revealed to me like Job, he will give you the grace to go through it. Even the bride of Christ testified of this and the Lord put his stamp on this. Even if we receive things in fear, this is our God. He will give us the grace to go through it. But you don't need to. Begin to reject it right now. Don't matter how long it, you see. Remember, remember the things that are, are seen are temporary. The things that are unseen are eternal. Remember this in the same way. Don't focus your eyes on what you're looking at right here, right now. Focus your eyes on him and who he is and who he has called you to be and that you are in him. And with you in him, he is in you. Reject these lies. The enemy is coming with lies. They're all lies, whether he's coming against your ministry, where he's, whether he's coming against your identity, whether he's coming against your faith, whether he's coming against a circumstance, whether he's coming against your body in, in, physical, in a physical manner, they are lies. If they do not align with the word of God in the, in the sense that you are healed, you are forgiven, you are free, you have received an inheritance, there is an inheritance for you. If you haven't received it yet, you're on your way. You all, all of this will be used for good. Not a single thing that is in your life, even the things that you have brought forth on your own will be used for good because you are a child of God, because there is grace, because we serve a God that is merciful. The enemy is a liar. If it's coming with fear, it's not from God. There's something that he can show you. There is this. This is a lesson that you will be victorious in. If it if it is if it is attached with fear, if it is attached with condemnation, accusation, all of that is a source of fear. If is if it is attached with any type of fear, reject it now. Be strengthened. I release even as these words are being declared. The fire of the Holy Spirit is touching you guys. We are living in a day and age where it is the presence of God, the light of God that shines forth that will touch the lives of those who receive. It is the spirit within you that will either approve or deny. Remember who the Lord is and what he's done in your life. When it comes to these tests, where the Lord has become silent, even though he's present, use the things that the Lord has taught you to use. Exercise them now. If you have a, a pain, something comes in, a headache, these members, there's, there, uh, he's allowing these attacks from the enemy that we would come out refined as pure gold greater and greater each time shining brighter and brighter each time their lies wait on the Lord and resist the enemy it doesn't matter what you see or what you feel 
resist, continue to resist because around the bend is your victory. Oh, he just reminded me. Yesterday I woke up, I had a pain. I don't know if this is gonna shut off. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, that you are sovereign, that you are above any attack of the enemy, any weapon of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I felt a pain as I was walking on, on my heel. There is absolutely no reason why I should be feeling any type of pain in my heel. Immediately, the Lord gave me a prophetic insight. The enemy right now is under our heel. His head is being crushed. Remember, it was the seed of the woman that we would come up against the enemy and he would bruise our heel, but we would crush his head. In Genesis 3, I believe. Right now, prophetically, the Lord says, he, we are already crushing his head. Hold fast. The victory is around the bend. That's prophetic. Hold fast. You're almost there. His head is being crushed under your heel right now. You will come out victorious. You will come out brighter. That the glory of God would be seen in greater measures in your life. Bless you.